It's actually a conversation about our children as well. And there are actually GLP-1 medications out there targeting kids and pediatricians are prescribing them because children are losing their natural GLP-1 activity also. So why are we losing this activity, which we should be having, which should be working well into our 60s or so, you know, maybe even into our 70s? I think universally, we have to all agree that the primary trigger of this occurred and happened when we changed how we grow our food, source our food, prepare our food and eat our food. So that's one kind of hooked up into that is a similar idea of the toxic load, right? And that too mm. has steadily increased over the last hundred years or so until today we, you know, are really being forced to understand and reckon with the fact that it is impacting what our body's doing with appetite, with the microbiome again, with inflammation, with so much more. So that's probably a second really big factor. I think the third modern day, maybe in the last 20, 30 years, is our electronic exposure. I think you're going to see that come out more and more as a factor that is playing into disruption of sort of GLP-1 regulation, our loss of it, mm. and more. I mean, I can tell just a quick personal story. Like I spend a ton of time in front of the computer, whether it's writing or charting or thinking or whatever it is. And I noticed that, you know, on some of those computer days when I'm not up and active and seeing patients over and over again, I would get like snacky is probably the best way to describe it. Like I want salt, you know, I want something crunchy. I started wearing blue light glasses and put a blue light blocker over my computer. All of that went away. Yeah. So there's something about light and the wavelength of light that's impacting our hormones, starting with the pineal gland and then going all the way down to our gut and our brain and so much more. I think the fourth big bucket is always the elephant in the room, but stress and cortisol definitely influence a lot of the degradation of our hormones. So this idea of where is this coming from? Is it people aren't sleeping, they're super stressed. We have a modern age where we can stay up 24 hours a day, we're always connected. Is it generational trauma? Is it immediate trauma? Like all these ideas are wrapped up into cortisol and our body's inability to truly rest, reboot and reset the hormone axis. So to me, those are like your four really big buckets of why this is happening and what's taken place and why we're just seeing an epidemic across the board and across ages when it comes to metabolic health, obesity, and all the other sort of sidebar of those two major diagnoses.